why when we deep dive in water do we feel that the pressure increases on our ears? Why does an object float or sink? Why balloons fly? All these questions will be answered in this lesson with the analysis of the dystrophic equilibrium and buoyancy. Let's start with the hydrostatic equilibrium. Consider a small cubic region of dimension dx, dy, and dz. The forces acting on the boundaries are pressure forces, and the volume or body force is the weight that acts in the direction of the gravity vector, in our case, the negative y direction. The weight body force can be defined as the cube's mass times the gravity acceleration. Now let's analyze the forces acting on the cube in the x direction only. Starting from the left side, we have that the pressure acting on the side of the volume creates a pressure force. On the right side, the pressure plus a small variation is applied in the opposite direction than the pressure we have on the left face of the cube. In order to be in equilibrium, the sum of these two forces needs to be equal to zero. Repeating the same steps for the other two directions, we complete the equilibrium equations. The equations can be then simplified in this final form that tells us that the pressure varies only in the direction of the gravity vector. Let's now see how we can use the hydrostatic equation we just derived. So, let's assume that we have a column of water under a gravitational field and we want to estimate the pressure at two different locations. Integrating the hydrostatic equation between these two points along the vertical direction, we get this final relation. This actually tells us that the pressure varies linearly if the fluid density stays constant. The deeper we go into water, the higher the pressure is going to be. This is the reason why we need to compensate the pressure as we dive deep down in water. The same expression can be generalized and used to calculate, for example, the pressure distribution acting on a dam. But what if the density is not constant? The density can be then calculated using the ideal gas law. Combining this relation with the hydrostatic equilibrium equation and then integrating along the y direction give us this final expression. Under the assumption of constant temperature. For non-constant density, the pressure varies exponentially with altitude. Now, let's see if this is actually a reasonable assumption. We are going to use this formula to calculate the pressure at the top of Mount Everest. Assuming a temperature at sea level of 300 kelvins, we get that the pressure on Mount Everest is equal to 277 millimeters of mercury. This result is about 10% off than the real pressure that we will have on top of the Mount Everest. The solution is not exact because the temperature is not constant along this large variation of altitude. However, the expression we found gives us a reasonable approximation at lower altitude. So far, we found out how to calculate the pressure at different height. Now we can extend this analysis to submerged bodies, for example, submarines, ROVs or AUVs, and calculate 
what is the pressure that they need to sustain while operating underwater. Integrating the pressure over the body surface, we can also estimate the force and the moment that will act on the vehicle. Now, let's travel back in time. We are in ancient Greece when Archimedes discovered his famous principle. King Hieron II of Syracuse asked Archimedes to find a way to determine if his crown was made of pure gold. Archimedes found out while bathing that the amount of water spilled out of this tub must be related to his weight and volume. Archimedes' principle states that the pressure force acting on a body immersed in a static fluid equals to the weight that the fluid displaces. Consider now a body of a generic shape where omega is its volume. The object is subject to a pressure field dictated by the gravitational field. Integrating the pressure over the surface of the body, we can estimate the pressure force acting on it. Using a simple theorem, we can transform the surface integral into a volume integral and find that the pressure force is equal to the volume integral of the gradient of the pressure. From our previous analysis, we know that the gradient of the pressure is not zero only in the direction of the gravity vector. In our case, we assume the y direction. Substituting the terms, we get this final expression. This tells us that a body submerged in a fluid displays the fluid and the pressure force acting on the body is equal to the weight of the volume of fluid displaced. Archimedes used this principle to verify that the king's crown was not made by pure gold. This because a crown of same weight but made by a lighter material than gold will have a larger volume and displace more volume of water than a pure gold crown. A direct consequence of this principle is buoyancy. Why do a body float or sink in a fluid? Assume that we have two bodies at the same height underwater with the same volume. One is wood and one is concrete. Both are subject to the same pressure force that will push them up. While, due to the difference in density, the two bodies will have a different weight. The direct consequence is that the concrete body will sink, while the wooden body will float. The concrete body has a negative buoyancy, while the wood has a positive buoyancy. We can also define a different kind of buoyancy, called neutral buoyancy. This is typically used by scuba divers in order to be able to maintain the same position if they are not moving. Neutral buoyancy is achieved when the force generated by the fluid pressure is equal to the weight of the scuba diver. We can also analyze buoyancy from a different point of view, introducing the concept of specific gravity. Specific gravity is the ratio of density of a substance over the density of water at 4 Celsius degrees. When this ratio is less than 1, we have positive buoyancy and the body will float. If it's equal to 1, we have neutral buoyancy and the body will stay in its original position while if the specific gravity is larger than 1, the body will sink due to negative buoyancy. Buoyancy is the reason why balloons, lanterns, blimps fly in the sky. This is because the air, or the gas inside them, is less dense than the surrounding air, and this causes a pressure force 
on these bodies to create a positive buoyancy and make them float.